You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's pay-per-view after show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's pay-per-view after show. <laughs> Hello and welcome to UFC AfterBuzz TV. We are live. We're a little late, but we are live. Better late I than checked. Never. I checked. I was. I'm watching myself right now. Are you watching? <laughs> right no. now? Okay. We are live with Mr. George Hermosa and Mr. J Tan. Hey, lady. Ch- hey, lady. <laughs> hey, lady. I can say it back, right? Uh, to somebody else, yeah. Okay. To another chick. Okay. Sure. <laughs> we are live recapping. What's your name? UFC. Did you say your name? Oh, my name's Dari Bernardo. Hi. Let's get the Oh, answer. Daria. My name's Daria. This is Beavis. This is Butthead. No, no. <laughs> oh. Just kidding. My hey, name's Dari Baronado. Hey, baby. It's spelled the same, but it's pronounced differently. Oh, duly noted. That's too bad. I'm anyway, leaving then. We are live talking about mm-hmm. UFC Fight Night 42 in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now, this is a special one because I think three of the people on this card were locals. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was a really big match. At least that. It was at the Tingley Coliseum, and there was 8,775 in attendance. Yeah. Pretty good crowd for a card like this. It's it's funny, too, that it was the first time there for such a long time that the UFC right? has had stars from Albuquerque, especially, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, Diego Sanchez, uh-huh. uh, from star from Ultimate Fighter 1. In fact, the very first uh, Ultimate Fighter Champion. of the tournament. Yeah, yeah, of the tournament um, way back in 2006, I believe it was. Right. Right? 2005, uh, 2006. Five, yeah, five, six-ish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, of course, Four. John Dodson as well, uh, former flyweight uh, uh, challenger. Yep. And um, so both of them with Jackson Winklejohn's uh, gym in Albuquerque. Yes. So f- it's strange that that would be the first time that they come there. I think so, many... too. I When yep. they said it, I was like, the first time I thought I've seen someone there. Yeah. I mean, were they, were but... they not regulated before? Do you know? Or... I don't know. It's been regulated there oh, for yeah. quite some time. And, in fact, uh, Jackson Winklejohn's, uh, Greg Jackson has a, a fight promotion there. Uh, like a, I think a smaller level regional pro fight promotion there okay. called Jackson's MMA. Oh, that's been going on for quite a while. So yeah, you know, Albuquerque is such a hotbed long for awaited. MMA. Yeah, long We're, awaited. We, we are here now. Good way of putting it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the main event was Ben Henderson versus Rustam Habilab. Mm-hmm. We will yeah. get to that later. We're going to start from the bottom of the main card yeah. with our first fight. It's Eric Perez versus Brian Caraway. Mm-hmm. Now we know Brian Caraway as Misha Tate's boyfriend. Mm-hmm. But I think tonight he proved to be a little bit more than Misha Tate's boyfriend. I think people kind of got to know him during the Ultimate Fighter show mm-hmm. as that one guy. So I think this is now kind of his his second coming out party as, as far as being a fighter. Right. As yeah, he's had so. a long a long career. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was, yeah I mean, uh, he was on uh, Ultimate if, Fighter as well. Mm-hmm, the fought in Strike Force uh, mm-hmm. prior to that. Um, he's been around for for more than a minute, to be sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, but of course, because of all the the antics with him being the assistant coach on that season of Ultimate Fighter right. between Misha and Ronda, you know that's uh, probably the most uh, most attention that he got in terms of yeah. He got audiences. some some bad press from that. He tweeted some things to Ronda. I don't know exactly what they were. I think he said something like, "I'm going to beat you up." Um, but I could be wrong yeah. on that. So he got some bad press for that. But um, he was the guy in the middle between the the two. High school mean girls <laughs> playing with each other. You don't want to be there. Like why? No, you, you don't. Want to especially be there? when you're a guy. When it's two girls and you're especially the guy in the middle. Especially when you're a guy. Not when... that not that Ronda had anything for him, but definitely he was the butt of jokes. Yeah, he was the butt of jokes. He mm-hmm. still is the butt of jokes. Um, Poor guy though. But I mean, again, I think this was his opportunity. As if now he's coming out. And he he's not trying to be. I'm sure as known as Maisha's boyfriend. It just hey. I'm, fi- I'm a fighter, I'm a too. fighter too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would be annoyed if I were him, yeah. too. Like, well, come on. He, uh, he defeated Eric Perez, who was uh, a guy that the UFC really had uh, picked to be uh, one of their hopeful yeah. stars. For... He was out for a year, Brian Caraway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is his first fight in over a year. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. wow. Yeah. Comes comes back very impressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. The finish was uh, was that he won by submission in the second, uh, two minutes and 51 seconds right. into the second round. Rear naked. Yeah, rear naked choke. And, you know, I was really impressed with uh, just his performance overall. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he outgrappled Eric for the most part, uh, controlled him a lot in the mm-hmm. first rounds. Uh 
had his back for quite a bit, and then uh, and then the second was able to get the back and secure a rear naked choke. And, yeah, uh, Eric didn't really have too many answers for uh, for Brian there. No, he had a guillotine attempt early in round one. He had, then he got the body triangle with the rear naked attempt. I mean, it was um, submission attempt after submission attempt with uh, mm-hmm. Brian Caraway. I don't think we expected any less. He's a wrestler. He's I mean, a good wrestler. He, he still impressed me, though. I mean, I I, I was not picking uh, Caraway to win at all. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, really? I mean, I thought, not that I think poorly of Caraway, I thought that highly of Eric Perez. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I still do. Um, but good for Caraway. I mean, I think it kind of helped him come out of that shadow of being, yeah. you know, Maisha's boyfriend or that one guy yeah. that was, was involved in that issue. So He was strong with his hands, too, yeah, getting to the ground. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, I really hope that he ends up fighting. He's ranked number fourteen. Yeah, so beating mm-hmm. a guy who's ranked above him, I know the UFC goes a lot of by the ranking. So I hope that he does fight guys like Eddie Wineland or Michael McDonald, or he or he does have unfinished business with Takuya Mizugaki, who yeah. he lost to. Uh-huh. You mentioned um, Mizugaki. Maybe that'll be a pretty close in fight. The near future. Yeah. yeah, or even uh, I was noticing here, Johnny Eduardo was listed as number nine uh, on the top ten, and Eddie Wineland who lost to Johnny, was listed as number five. So, you know, there's three options there. But Definitely. Caraway had called out uh, or suggested Mizu- uh, sorry, uh, Mizugaki. I think he did mention Mizugaki. In the post-fight interview. Yeah. Um, you got a couple options there. He wants that sure. revenge there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this could be the... The high, the rise for Brian Caraway. I think it is a rising fight for Brian Caraway. Mm-hmm. He definitely proved that he's more than you know just a secondary fighter to his partner. Mm-hmm. Um, he's definitely a good fighter himself. Then, all right. So the next fight we have Eve Edwards versus Piotr Holman. Piotr. P- P- Piotr. 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 <laughs> Piotr. Pete. We were practicing. Petey. Like, I just call him Holman. Petey Halls. Well, like yeah, I call him Petey. <laughs> we're friends. So, right. Yeah, yeah. I know him. You know. Chilling at the. Well, you said Eve Edwards. You know how many fights he's had? Uh, yeah, I do. 65. Well, we're all trying to build some suspense. No, because oh. I knew. Well, you oh. asked the question. Well, I mean, I, cause I, I t- <laughs> she's going to give you an answer. <laughs> if she knows it, we I cut only to the knew chase. because he told me before we started. <laughs> okay, that's my fault. Yeah, Eve has been around for a very long time, several stints in the UFC, and uh, his record is 42, 20, 1, and one no contest. It's one draw and one no contest. Wow. Wow. Versus uh, Piotr Hallman. I wish I had my notes here on uh, what his record was. Hey, hold George, on, I got it. George. As of as of as of after the fight yesterday, he is yes. fifteen and two. Fifteen and two. So he's oh, had wow. less matches than Eve Edwards has has, won. has had losses. Yeah. For that matter. Yeah, a, yeah. a lot less experienced in the cage for sure. Yeah. But uh, he still put on a good fight. Looked so really good. Yeah. Our our winner was. Pieter. Pieter. Pieter Holman. Pieter? Yeah, by rear naked choke. Uh, in the third round. Second one in a row there for, for the night. Yeah, third round, so two minutes and 31 seconds. A um, couple eye pokes, remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah this this was a match sides. of eye pokes. On yeah. both ends. Yeah, Peter landed one uh, accidentally on Eve in the first round, mm-hmm. and then they traded him in the second mm-hmm. round. Uh, for the most part, though, Peter was really uh, – um, Piotr, excuse me. Piotr. Was, was really on his game there. Um, yeah. Eve did not have uh, in, in the commentary. Um, Anik and, and uh, Kenny Florian were talking about how it looked like uh, Eve was just gassing out, yeah. which I think was the case. Absolutely. And, you think it's something with age at all? Or? No, well, less that they, you know they mentioned. I don't know what the el- elevation is in Albuquerque, but they mentioned, uh, they mentioned elevation it being an issue several times through all the fights that elevation would be an issue with these yeah. guys. So I, I'd have to look up the uh, uh, the number to to know exactly, but uh, um, you know what the. The height was, but between that and and Peter, you know, age could have something to do with it. Just in terms of Eve being not not just th- well, thirty seven is not too old, mm. but right. having sixty matches, you know. I was gonna say it's more so the damage. That yeah, he's the taken. roads. Uh, yeah, he he's pretty road weary when it t- mm-hmm. comes to fight uh, fight experience. It looked, it looked like w- towards the end there, he was just so not only gassed, but his movements were so slow. He almost just fell right into that. Uh, to the choke mm-hmm. and you saw him he tapped immediately like he yeah. was almost waiting to tap I didn't even see a defense trying to get the two on nothing it just looked like it was over from there yeah um, you know that that happens uh, as, as you get older you gotta be careful uh, kind of how you're living and uh-huh. you know and maintaining that cardio obviously Eve is in great condition um, absolutely you wouldn't be fighting in the UFC if you weren't if you weren't right mm-hmm. yeah um, but between that and, and the road years uh, on your body you know, it can uh, that can can bring your career kind of to an early decline. It's, you know, it could take a toll on you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone has like we were talking about earlier. Everyone has their timing with their career. It seems like 
you know, there's some guys that jump in and they're at the title shot and you're like, oh my God, they only have 15 yeah. fights or 10 fights. Mm -hmm. Then there's other guys, you're like, oh my God, now they have the title shot. They've had 35 fights. It's yeah. like, so you see such a, you know. You know, and a lot of that is, uh, we, we can kind of touch on this a bit because I think it does play into uh, our conversation earlier about uh -huh. where guys are in the rankings and who do they fight next. Um, you know, in cases like the 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 more recent and the, the newer weight classes, if you will, uh -huh. um, people are going to have fewer uh, fewer fights on their record once they get to in the title contention, right? Because that uh, that weight class hasn't necessarily been around as much, certainly not in the UFC. I'm mm -hmm. thinking about the flyweights, um, the, uh, you know, the the women's uh, the women's divisions. Mm -hmm. um, Speaking of rising and elevation, yeah. I got to cut you off real quick because okay. <laughs> a special ladies book came out last week. Maria Menounez's book came out last mm. week. Uh, it's the Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness. You guys want to get healthy and beautiful and look like Maria Menounez? Check it out. And Stores near you, Amazon. Amazon and everywhere. Barnes Kindles, and iPads, Borders. I know. Do they do they exist anymore? I'm saying that's how good borders? the book is that even Borders has it. If, Bor <laughs> if Borders is open, it has it. Well, Walden's has gotten back into business <laughs> just for this one book. That's how good it is, folks. Maria, that's a serious plug for you. And it's her birthday today. Oh, hey. happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Maria Menounos. Go Patriots. She'll know what it is. <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh, not to... this again. No? No. No. Mm -mm. All right. Well, I figured we'd kill some time. <laughs> I you're, mean, you're, okay. You're killing. Oh, we did that. Uh, well, I mean, I thought, is that you? Oh, that's me. Yeah. You're welcome, Maria. Oh. Dear Maria. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't know we were supposed to fill in the blanks. To, to you. Is this Paris Hilton? <laughs> that sounds a lot like Paris Hilton. Maria Menounos, happy birthday to you. Paris Hilton is uh, is a well medium ranked uh, strawweight. She can... her fight career is uh, we may we may see her before too long coming up and uh, notching up some some matches. You know, eventually working her way to Invicta, and then after that, who knows the UFC? The sky's the limit with that girl, right? Not so much. So just kidding. All right, all right, uh, <laughs> Daria. No comment. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. <clears throat> so we have Eve Edwards, Piotr Holman. You like that little Russian accent? <laughs> um, yeah, it was I a great that was fight. Polish. Was it Polish? He's Polish. No, he but Polish. I did it in a Russian accent. Oh, something more German. Nitpicking. <laughs> I need to go back to my <clears throat> accents 101 DVD <laughs> that I study at home. Um, yeah, no, it was a great fight. Ended in a rear naked choke. Um, like we said, he got tired. Just looked like it was over when it was over. Mm -hmm. But um, next we have John Dotson versus John Moraga. Uh, featherweight. No, no, before that was uh, Rafael ah, Dos Anjos. Oh, I'm so Jason sorry. High. Rafael Dos Anjos the, versus Jason High. We had so many lightweight matches <laughs> on this show. Yeah, and it's it's interesting to know why they do that because well, you as a matchmaker mm -hmm. can fill us in. Why? You definitely want to stock up on matches uh, when you're booking a card. Um, Last minute, uh, you know, last minute cancellations, dropouts, mm -hmm. injuries—they happen at all levels. So, um, what the UFC has started doing uh, a couple of years ago, and you know, I, I kind of take note and, and will do a similar thing as much as possible, is to book a number of matches of the same weight class. Whatever your your top couple of matches are, you want to have a few backups of the same other uh, same weight class, so that if something happens one of the guys in the in the top matches falls out due to injury or whatever reason mm -hmm. you have a few other guys that are already peaking at that time mm -hmm. uh, the fight uh, fight day um if you need beat you can shift them over and stick them in right you don't do so much you don't do that so much at the amateur level on our shows just because um well i personally don't like to do it i, sh I shouldn't say a lot of other guys uh fight promoters will do it mm -hmm. because you just stick them in but i feel that that's unfair to the guys that have been training for someone specific and and had that mental focus now at the pro level it's different because there's money involved this is guys careers right and it's their job and so when the boss says i need you to do this job instead of that job mm -hmm. you say yeah sure okay and frankly you're probably going to get either a little bit more money for it. You're just definitely in a higher profile mm -hmm. on the card. 
Um, so it behooves you to take it. Yeah, it's abs- yeah. it's always an upgrade, you know. And that would be the case in the amateurs. But again, I if I do that, if I shift one guy to fill in for another spot, mm-hmm. I'm leaving this other guy hanging, you know. As long as I, if I can get everybody on the card, that's the most important thing, you know. Oh. But um, and it is certainly making sure that I'm, I'm booking even matches um, is hugely important. That's paramount. Right. Uh, at the amateur level. So, you know, if I shift one guy up, as long as I can find a replacement for that, uh, the lower match, for lack of a better phrase, then, you know, it's not such a big <clears> deal. <throat> um, but in this case, uh, you know, with, um, you yeah, with last minute dropouts, mm-hmm. you do book several weight, uh, several different matches of the same weight right. class. And I feel like amateur, you have so many dropouts anyway. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. because, I mean, happens constantly. some of these guys, it's their first fight ever. Yeah. They, nerves get to them or whatever gets to them. Injuries at this low level. Yeah, especially injuries and, and also life itself. You know, at the amateur level, mm-hmm. these guys, it's it might be their career. They might want it to be their career, but they're also juggling real life and their own a day-to-day job, things like that. Yeah, they don't I can have, speak to that. Yeah. yeah, they don't have uh, the, the financial freedom to focus mm-hmm. solely on MMA and their training. That's a huge part of it. It really is, yeah. And, and even at the pro level, that's the case for a lot of the guys at the right. pro level, you know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, in, in the end, though, it's, it's always better to stay ready so you don't have to Absolutely. get ready, right? I agree. Yeah. So before, before we go on, it's mm-hmm. Rafael Dos Anjos versus Jason Hodge. Rafael. Mm-hmm. That's what I said. No, I'm agreeing. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> That's a close cool high five there. I, I meant to make a comment. Look at this teamwork, did, guys. Did How about hit, that, did right? You, did, did you hit puberty? I see a, a newborn scruff. I mean, it, it took a while. <laughs> I mean, might as well just show it. You're doing better some, than I some am. Some of us are a shower. Some of us are a grower. As you can clearly see, I'm neither. <laughs> You're doing better than me. And <laughs> I'm not gonna tell. We're not gonna talk about how old I am compared mm. to that guy. We talked about it. We talked about it today. <laughs> Let's just. Say, I won't tell any ages, guys. But we have three generations in the room. Mm-hmm. Three decades. In the three room. decades. Okay. And and two. Uh, yeah. Both. July 16th. By the way, check that out, huh? Big party. July 16th. Uh, UFC Fight Night also going down in Atlantic City. We will be covering that one. Hopefully, we can just be there. D- Dario's hometown. It's my hometown. That's right. So we got a place we all... to crash. Take a road so, trip. My road mom's road. in Atlantic City right now gambling. Nice. Let's go join her. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. All right. So let's go. Let's go. Come on. Oh. We Wait. still got to talk about the match. Oh. Guys. Right. oh okay. there's, there's a couple other matches Respect before we hit the road. Respect to Rafael. Rafael. Just saying, we will be taking gifts on uh, July 17th here at the Afterbus Studios. Is your birthday on, on a Saturday? Uh, yeah. Saturday is, is the 16th, and then Sunday the 17th will be our show. That means you are, were meant to party on that birthday. That's right. Yeah, we'll be wearing party hats for, mm-hmm. for that show. Okay, so so I just want to talk about this fight because I'm excited. Mm. It, it was a lightweight bout. Uh, it, Jason High, I saw him uh, really – oh, he dropped down a weight class first. I want to say that. Yeah. Jason High um, was not ranked in the top 15, but he uh, came in uh, facing Rafael Dos Anjos. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dos Anjos ended up uh, finishing him in the second. At mm-hmm. uh, 236 by TKO. Mm-hmm. Uh, swarmed on him. Um, yeah, it was, uh, I'm looking at my notes here. I poke in the second. Mm-hmm. Um, that ringside doctor, though, I mean, uh, definitely mm-hmm. earning his paycheck with all those checking on those eye pokes. Yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I thought Dos Anjos definitely belongs in the top 10. He had some excellent stand up. I thought he had some great submission attempts. Uh, kudos to Jason High for being able to defend those, those yeah. submission attempts as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but. And and yeah. In the second, Dos Anjos landed a, a left hook. I thought it was a brutal left hook. I it thought they should have yeah. lo- they should have stopped it right there. I mean, the guy just fell. Mm-hmm. We're watching it, and you're like, "Oh my god, why isn't he stopping?" Uh, yeah. yeah, we thought it should have stopped earlier. I agree with you. Dos Anjos came in and landed a bunch of other. I say at fists. least like ten to twelve yeah. mm-hmm. punches that I think were ten to twelve too ma- too many. So yeah, it was I, a left I, hook, and then he took him down, and it was just a brutal ground yeah. and pound. I yeah. agree. I agree. But yeah, I mean, I I, I really like Rafael. Um, he does have a few blemishes on his record, but for the most part, the guy's top five material. I'll get into who I think he should fight next in a little bit. But, yeah, I, I definitely think he belongs. Uh, it's only a matter of time before I think he maybe hopefully gets that title shot yeah. sometime soon. We're starting to talk about that. I was uh, mentioning the after post, uh, post-fight interview, and uh, he's – He's definitely gunning for, for definitely a shot Definitely a there. contender yeah. he, in, the, in the near future. But 155 is bottled up for lightweight, 155 pounds. Bottled right. up for a little bit with uh, you know waiting for 
the title match the between champs to fight. Yep, yep. Anthony Pettis defending against uh, Gilbert Martinez. Uh, I'm oh, sorry, Melendez. <laughs> Jeez, pardon me. Just call him El Nino. I do know who <laughs> El Nino Gil Martinez is. At the end of yeah, yeah, yeah. Gil Martinez. He's I think a we spoke. Mitt trainer. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, He's we a spoke, friend of mine. Spoke trying to get a couple of his guys really? to, into the U of he M. He used May. to train with Gina Carano. He was yeah. our, he was mm-hmm. our mitt trainer for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's funny. Small Hopefully, world. I can get uh, get some of those guys on the next U of MMA show. Yeah, definitely. Well, Gilbert Martinez isn't fighting. Gilbert Melendez is. Yep, I sit corrected there. <laughs> but you know, they're uh, we're going to see a lot of uh, a lot a lot of lightweight action mm-hmm. with title implications before we actually see anything happen because we're talking about six months from now. You know. Yeah, um, I feel like we're in like a, a sticky situation right now. It's like he's going to yeah. come out. For him to come in, mm-hmm. um, yeah, to get those. But it was a good win for Rafael dos Anjos. Yeah, TKO second round, um, very decisive win, which is what I like to see. Mm-hmm. And with the judging that was going on tonight, I think decisive. We'll, we'll get into that in a little <laughs> bit. Right, it's coming. It's coming. So next, we finally have John Dodson versus John Moraga. Oh, hold on. I got. I picked John to win. Who'd you get? John. Oh, nice. Oh my God. I but I I picked him to win. You he lost. Somebody had to win. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I'm never going to leave you hanging. I got you. I didn't pick that either of those mean. guys to win. But then again, I. what do I know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Jay Tan. He doesn't know anything. <laughs> All right. So it was uh, John Dodson was lo- the local. Okay. Battle of, uh, Born and raised in Albuquerque, correct? Yeah. Yep. That's yep. right. John He's Dodson. used to that elevation. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, so needless to say, he. Oh, it was a it was a weird stoppage after the second round. Um, go ahead. Well, Dodson, uh, you know, this is a battle of two former uh, flyweight challenge, title challengers, mm-hmm. and uh, John Dodson won by uh, TKO slash doctor stoppage between rounds two and three. Mm-hmm. Um, he went in for, uh, uh, I mean, it was a great battle back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, John Dodson just so super fast. Oh my god! You know, we I kept blinged, talking about. I blinked and I missed ten of his punches. Yeah, yeah. He, Insane. It looked like we're we're watching off of uh, um, my Directv app, and you kept <laughs> so we're getting this stream through the internet, and it kept looking like the uh, the speed, like the video was catching up with the audio because he was so damn fast. Oh, it, he was so fast. Yeah, you know, it looked like one of those uh, cartoons, like Tom and Jerry with little uh, legs running like that. You know, if if I were and Dana yet it was White, at regular speed. That's John Dodson for you. If I you were know. Dana White, that is the fighter I would want fighting for me. He is. So good fast. thing that he is. So, <laughs> but if, he, if. <laughs> if I were to, yeah. you know, um, no, but he is just so fast, so entertaining. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so he has like this charisma behind the microphone that I kind of like. Um, I like that one part where he get a, uh, I think he got clipped in the, in the hoo-ha. <laughs> and just, start, and just starts shot. running around, just running around, just running it yeah. off, and then just runs towards the opponent. He, the ref had somebody like, whoa, hey, let me, uh, mm-hmm. let me make sure you guys are good. Hit, hit, hit down there. And he you did can a say lap. balls. Balls oh. isn't he got that bad. Hit it's in a the nut balls. shot. Yeah. Yeah. He got, it was a nut shot. It looked. It, it must have just grazed because Dodson was circling and, and really trying I to kind of his, recuperate. I think this guy's adrenaline and testosterone levels are so high mm-hmm. that he just like was like, I'm gonna run this off. He, he ran a lap around the cage yep. and then went to the middle to fight his opponent. And <laughs> before ref- Mario <laughs> Yamasaki had a chance Mario, to stop yeah. it and give him a chance to to kind of breathe and collect right. himself. And right. by that point, when Mario finally did step in. Dodson was like, no, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> what, you know? are you he, what are you stopping for? Exactly. Like, yeah, he was, he was ready to go. And you couldn't, uh, from camera angle, you couldn't quite see Moraga's expression. But Dodson looked like yep. he almost had lost the fight. He's like, what are you doing here? No, 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 no. We're ready to go. You right. Know? He, was, yeah. he was a little upset about um, that. Again, the speed of, of John Dodson. He's so you know? good that even though, you know, he's a flyweight, so he doesn't have that much reach. But he's so quick that he covers so much ground. Yeah. It's just insane. He, this, he covers ground like no other. I mean... It was typical Dodson style, the in and out motion, mm-hmm. cutting the angles and not circling out. He was cutting angles. He, I mean, he would be here and mm-hmm. then he'd be like tapping him on the shoulder. Hey, I'm okay. Uh, oh, <laughs> like, you know, not to, not to bash Moraga. Moraga did a great job defending uh-huh. what he could defend. Yeah. But um, Dodson was just so fast, so quick on his feet, so quick with his hands. So fun to watch. Yeah. For me, anyway. Yeah. But Dodson had that uh, knockdown in the second. Um, mm mm-hmm. And I believe uh, was it was a knee. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was a knee that landed knee to the to, to the face of Moraga. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then followed up with some uh, ground and pound, mm-hmm. uh, really swarming on on Moraga. Yeah. Um, just at the end of the round. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, then when we come back from commercial. Yeah, yeah. We cut to commercial, come back to it, and then all of a sudden, uh, and then the referee is uh, is calling off the match. Right. Uh, because the doctor took a look at Moraga's nose. And visually, you couldn't really see that it was that bad. But later on, I, I was listening to the post-fight mm-hmm. press conference, and uh, yeah, they were reporting that that was definitely one that you want to uh, – that they wanted to stop it for for the safety of the fighter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. Look, if I I would say if that round went on 10 more seconds, 15 more seconds it would have been stopped anyway. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Probably. That yeah. ground and pound was rough and it was like yeah. it was like safe by or the just bell. the speed of those punches. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I was thinking. The speed of those punches, it almost looks so bad. I mean, I'm sure they hurt. I'm sure he he does hit with power. They they've said that over and over again that Dotson does have power for his for his weight class, but um just the just the look of it mm-hmm. as a referee looking in on this flurry of punches yeah. could even mentally trip him into saying, "Okay, I got to call this fight." Well, it's I wouldn't even say that that's uh, necessarily a mistake either. No, when we talked no. about when Big John was here last week, mm-hmm. um, we were talking about how you know it, it's the referee's job to determine when a fighter is in trouble, and once he's in mm-hmm. trouble, past the point of being able to come back and get out of a bad situation, right? That's the referee's job then to call the match, mm-hmm. and. Right. Given the speed of Dodson, if you fire off, look, if if a fighter, uh, if a fighter takes five, ten punches in a row, then um, he's not defending himself intelligently. That's enough enough punches to go. Okay, this guy is done. And right. for Dodson, with his speed to land off ten punches, yeah. doesn't take that long compared to somebody somebody of a heavier weight class. You know, absolutely. So, you know, that's a factor. It's uh, the referees have to be sharper. With the with the smaller weight classes, but it also could be doing. I'm not saying this as being a valid statement, but it could be doing less damage than say, you know, a heavyweight. <laughs> yeah, three yeah, it might punches. not have as much damage behind right. it, but boom, 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 mm-hmm. boom, boom, boom. That's gonna be, uh, you know, you you don't have a chance to defend yourself as right. opposed to boom, 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 but ten right. times in a row. And yeah. it's it's those vital moments when those punches are coming. That mm-hmm. Not only do you have to defend yourself, but you have to let the referee and the judges know that you're defending yourself. It's those yeah. couple seconds. You have to get up or they're going to call a fight that maybe you're it's not ready for It's the perfect storm. End. You're like, I'm taking this guy's punches. Wait, wait. No, no, I can't. I got no time to, reach, to right. respond. Screw it. Oh, the match is done? Whoops. Yeah. But Cause that's... Some- that's not how he he did the match did end though. Was, right. You know. No, of course not. But. I'm sure. I'm sure if he. Wa- I mean, he looks like he wanted to keep going, but mm-hmm. it just again mm-hmm. when the doctor steps yeah. in, there's really nothing he can do. Right. You know, it's funny. We uh, I'll, I'll tie it, bring it back to Bacon here. Um, the last U of MMA show we had a title match scheduled, mm-hmm. and uh, the champion unfortunately we had to, had to pull out because of uh, injury, uh, um, something going on with his eyes. Okay. And. You know, I was thinking the same thing as I'm watching this Dodson fight. There's certain things that, you know, a fighter, certain uh, injuries, a fighter just toughs through Uh and steps in the cage. Um, You do what you got to do because nobody goes into the cage fully 100%, rarely. But there's certain things that you don't want to mess around with, and that is uh, the snot box. You want to make sure the guy can breathe well right. and the eyes, you know, and both of those, even though, as we said earlier, it's, it didn't look visually like it was uh, a really bad uh, break to, of the nose or anything like that. You uh-huh. know, it wasn't gushing or anything like that. But based on the doctor's, uh, doctor's criteria and his analysis, if he decides something like the nose, you know, and it can affect a guy's breathing pattern, mm-hmm. which everyone needs to breathe to live, you know, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to mess around with that. You know, yeah. that's different than... Uh, that's uh, a literal know. disadvantage. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's a real yeah. disadvantage. I mean, um, you know, playing on like a rolled ankle or yeah. or a broken hand. We've seen these before. Yeah, we've joint seen injuries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something that maybe you can you have to tough through it, or maybe you can't. Right, whatever. and maybe with that adrenaline pumping, you don't feel it as much. Mm-hmm. Whereas breathing through the nose when the adrenaline's pumping, that's what you're supposed to do to calm yourself down is mm-hmm. to take those deep breaths. Yeah. So I think that might you know. Well, it was be definitely you know. Yeah. I mean, speaking of Dotson, the thing that I love the most is. Yes, flyweights are really known for kind of not having the much power, maybe going to the distance a lot. Tell that to DJ and Joe B, huh? Yeah, exactly. But I'm saying guys like Dotson, I mean, the guy doesn't really have that many decision victories. He just Mm -hmm. takes them out. Yeah. A lot of wins by TKO, and I love that. I mean, that just shows that even though he is a flyweight, the guy still packs a lot of power. Absolutely. And it's funny because me and this guy were talking, hey, who should he fight next? And for a little bit, Mm -hmm. we were saying he should fight Joseph B. Uh-huh. Joey B, you know, and then up until Joe that, Benavides, alpha male, uh, team alpha male from uh, the Bay Area. Up until Sacramento. that post fight interview, and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 
what, do you want to so, explain why? Yeah, we were, we were looking at the UFC rankings and John Dodson and Joe Benavidez, both of whom have challenged for uh, challenged Demetrius Johnson for the flyweight championship. Mm -hmm. Both of them are ranked number one. And so we're looking at it, and of course, Demetrius Johnson, just uh, in a few days, actually, less than a week, he's going to defend against uh, Ali, uh, gosh, where, where's my notes? I, w I don't want to, Bagatinov. Bagatinov, yeah. yeah. A few few names I still got to practice myself. But, um, you know, he's got that uh, title match coming up, so we're sitting here thinking, well, who does he fight next? And obviously, Joe Benavidez, having lost recently to mm -hmm. DJ, uh, first round KO, um, it kind of made sense that you, you'd have the two number one contenders, uh, or at least tied for number one, mm -hmm. facing off for a title match. And then Dodson gets on uh, gets on the mic afterwards and just blows the roof off. Uh, just a, a charming, fun, <laughs> super energetic guy. You oh, know, you can't help yeah. but like him. He's got he's got a giant smile tattooed on his face. I think <laughs> right. you can't get that. Uh, there was no mean mugging. I'm calling you out. It was kind of like I'm calling you out. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I don't think he knows how to have a bad day. No. But uh, so. and and yeah, that uh, that sold me right there. I said, okay, well, we've got a fly white title match in less than a week. Let's see what happens there. And then after that, John Dodson. That's the guy that I want to promote. You know, as right. a promoter, this is the kind of personality, this outgoing, yeah. gregarious guy. You know, everyone's and gonna love him. You can also tag on his title that he beat. T.J. Dillashaw. That's right. That's right. Yep. He beat our champion. Yep. He beat him on uh, the season finale of The Ultimate Fighter. If anything, he flights as a flyweight, but he won the Bantamweight tough and, or, uh, Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. 35. By beating yep. our current Bantamweight champion. That says a lot. T.J. Dillashaw. I, I look at him and I'm like, could he be a Bantamweight? I mean, he was, but... I well, you do that. that in the season because the matches, when you, the shooting schedule, guys fight so frequently mm -hmm. that there is not really time to safely and physically cut down. Right, properly. of course. So and you fight it a more natural. The way. Ultimate Fighter in general, if you know, if you're a guy that's not in the UFC looking to get in the UFC, and the Ultimate Fighter bantamweight's coming up, and you're ten pounds off or twenty pounds off, you're not going to say, mm -hmm. "Oh, well, yeah, my absolutely. season's not here." <laughs> you're going to get to that. So weight. How, how do they go? <laughs> Oh, oh my Morris? season's not here. You're yeah, not going to do that, guys. Fighters, that's a no-no for your career. Not like that. But you see, the, like, even the <laughs> I'm speaking as the girls. Of course. Um, you see them. There's so few weight classes. You know, we have 135 in the UFC now, and we're about to have 115. Mm -hmm. And it's like, me, for example, if I was ready to be at that level, mm -hmm. I, I would make 115 to get on that, this season. A lot of girls, yeah, they will do what they got to do because there's not enough uh, weight classes, at least in the UFC. Right. There are in other promotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and, and anybody will make it. I'll tell you, if you got two girls that are willing to fight at whatever weight and you can agree on the fight, make that one. Even if it's a catch weight, mm -hmm. you know, uh, be it pro or amateur. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, and so – you know, the, the UFC is the NFL. I mean, let's face it. it yeah. it's, the UFC is, mm -hmm. is the head honcho of MMA world. And as a fighter, you, you strive for it. Yeah, and eventually more weight classes will come in. Of uh, course. 115 will be the next mm -hmm. one. And then I would think probably either somewhere 125 or 45. For women? Um, are you speaking of? Yeah, yeah, for women. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't know what the next one would be. Um, there's, there's no real face for 45 right now because, you know, Cyborg's up in the air with all that going on, mm -hmm. which... I want to talk about the whole Invicta deal and how that will tie into sure, the Cyborg yeah. deal, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, whether it'll be 145 or 125. Um, I was I was surprised that they that they decided to go with 115. I, I think mm -hmm. there is a logical uh, thought process to this. You know, they, mm -hmm. um, the UFC, for those that don't know, the UFC, uh, what was it, less than a year ago, six months or so, their deal with Invicta. Invicta Fighting Championships is a uh, women's fight promotion, all women's uh, fight promotion, based more or less in the, in the Midwest, I think, uh, Kansas City or Are you so. Do that now? Well, yeah, I mean, let's talk about it now. Tell, yeah, tell. run by Shannon Knapp, who is a, uh, a longtime OG personality in the sport. She's worked with the UFC in the past, mm -hmm. worked with Strike Force. Um, and so she, a year or two ago, I believe, set up Invicta Fighting Championships, which was an all women's champ, uh, all women's promotion still is mm -hmm. and uh they had um several of their shows i think they've run about eight of them to date uh they ran on i pay-per-view and were very wildly successful mm -hmm. really popular fantastic matches and 115 is uh was a weight class that um i i guess there just was an influx it was one of the more popular weight classes mm -hmm. i believe uh in invicta and so after Ronda Rousey and the UFC discovered the boom of women's MMA, 
and we went toward they decided to do this uh, um decided to to expand women's weight classes mm -hmm. Um, they signed a deal with Invicta <clears throat> and basically signed all of their 115 pound women over to the UFC and they are entered into the next season of Ultimate Fighter which is going to start taping you said what next week I believe uh, yeah soon in the yeah. next couple weeks over I think. the summer yeah uh, and it'll be headed by um, Gil Melendez <laughs> El Nino versus uh, Anthony Pettis Anthony Pettis uh, yeah. lightweight uh, UFC champion that'll be really those will be really excited two coaches yeah. yeah not to mention that Invicta also housed a lot of the 135ers mm -hmm. they came yeah. out of the UFC yeah. it wasn't a direct contract for contract trade was it with the 135ers no uh, I think it was more so they just kind of hopped over as they came yeah it was individual uh, I believe individual contracts they bought over yeah, but essentially so you know it's it's the best way of saying it was a feeder system to the UFC mm -hmm. without it sounding um, negative like a minor league it's still exactly kind of right. a yeah. major yeah. promotion we're talking about gender we're not talking yeah. about quality of yeah, somebody no, that I don't think it's a minor league whatsoever it no. was an amazing parallel yeah. Um, platform for women's MMA. They were all over in this Invicta organization. Dana White decided he wanted to make a women's division, and mm -hmm. the women came there. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of amazing women that that I know personally over in Invicta still. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and uh, now let's talk about the deal that Invicta just made recently. Yeah. Step two of it. Um, Invicta uh just signed on to UFC Fight Pass, so now all of Invicta's fights will be streamed on the Fight Pass. Yeah. Network, I don't... right? Yeah, yeah they'll much. at least be housed. I don't know. Are they going to be streaming live? From what I heard, I think it's going to be live. Is that the Just, case? They're all going to be. They're going to have their shows I'm, live on. Yeah, I'm pretty pass. sure. I don't know. His, Invicta, I don't believe, has announced a date yet for their next show. Correct? No, but they have announced a fight that I'm okay. But I think it's a big deal about. because you have one of their deal. champions, Cyborg, and the whole thing about mm -hmm. that is, well, she's not going to fight here. Is she going to fight here? But now, well, she's going to fight under not the UFC umbrella, but on UFC essentially programming. Yeah, it, and yeah, I still think it's a big deal. Website, yeah. Chris Cyborg, she she's definitely having an upcoming fight that I know about, but um, she is now going to be streaming to UFC's fan base. Mm -hmm. So she will be, uh, you know, broadcast to the UFC fan base. So whether or not Dana White wants her in the UFC, this is the closest she's going to get right now. It's it's certainly another step in the larger puzzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, now mind you, Cyborg is, is has been known by uh, to UFC fans. Or the MMA fans, I should That's say, quite true. a while. And that to that fair. end, it might as well be UFC fans. Mm -hmm. um, her her career in Strike Force, you know, winning the women's uh, one forty five pound title, mm -hmm. um, you know, and from Gina Carano, and then uh, mm -hmm. defending, I believe, once or twice um, before uh, before Strike Force went down mm -hmm. and she was stripped of the title. Um, so you know, her name has been there at least in in terms of the MMA community. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I wasn't so much saying that it was going to get her more fans or anything like that it was mm -hmm. it's just gonna put her on that specific ufc mm -hmm. platform that she's been trying to get anyway mm -hmm. and that dana white's kind of denied giving her recently um i know that they but besides cyborg it's giving all of these women yeah. from invicta mm -hmm. that there aren't weight classes for in the ufc yet like the 145ers there's not a weight class for the ufc but mm -hmm. now these 145ers from invicta yeah. can be on the ufc i think it's gonna be very similar to how back in the day they had wec Mm -hmm. kind of they not were a masked yeah, over yeah exactly yeah, and I, I think I, and it, it was it was a it was a plus plus for everyone I mean you got WEC kind of had the smaller division weight classes and then eventually they kind of merged with UFC and right. it, like I said it was a win-win for everybody yeah. I mean, that's where you got the Demetrius Johnsons and the yeah. Uriah Faber and the Dominic Cruz DJ and, didn't come from WEC oh no I take that back you're right no he did he fought to yeah, Mizugaki and uh, Brad Pickett. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Way too much MMA to store up in this noggin. You do have a lot of MMA up there. Yeah. Um, okay, let's move on. <laughs> MMA and other stuff as well. <laughs> MMA. You know what I'm saying? Let's move on Some to the next Some people would fight. say something else. Uh, uh, I, I, based on your reaction, I, I am very looking forward to your analysis of this fight. Oh, I am looking forward to telling the world how I feel about this fight. Uh, so we had Diago Sanchez. Diago. Diego. <laughs> So, I know you've been watching Anchorman, haven't you? San Diego. I, I just want to say Diago. Diago. Diego Sanchez versus Ross Pearson. Uh, Diego was the local. Mm hmm. I hate you. <laughs> Diego was the local. It was that was the George, by the way, not me. <laughs> yeah. So far, I'm in good graces still. <laughs> so far. <laughs> it was a lightweight match. Mm -hmm. um, it was very controversial, in my opinion. Uh, the decision was. Uh, Diego Sanchez beating Ross Pearson 
Thiago. by scores of uh, let's see, it was a split decision. <laughs> Ross Pearson had a uh, yeah, and it was all the scores were across the board. What, Ross yeah. Pearson uh, was given uh, one judge scored it for Ross Pearson thirty twenty seven. Another judge scored it 27-30 for Sanchez. Uh-huh. And then the third judge scored it 28-29 for Sanchez, or, you know, in Sanchez's favor. Right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's across the board in terms of who uh, each judge seen a different fight. Right. Myself, personally, I uh, I actually scored it for, for Sanchez as well, 29-28. Uh, the first and the third, uh, I thought he won. Oh, no, I'm looking at my notes wrongly. I take that back. I apologize. It uh, looks like I had round two and three for Ross Pearson, 10-9. Right. Uh, but I did give Diego I think uh, the, the big, first one. I think the big thing was Pearson clearly had that second round. He he, mm-hmm. he knocked him down. He took him Absolutely. down. Absolutely. And then you hear Diego Sanchez, 30-27, and you're like, what? I don't know. And I, I love Diego Sanchez. I'm oh, sorry, know. Diago mm-hmm. Sanchez. I love him. I mean, to that me, guy me is – Diego, best friend. Yeah, okay. He told me to call him that. Wow. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, like, I like both of the fighters as fighters and as people, but I don't know who – the judge was that scored it uh, 30 27 for Diego. I just don't understand how that could happen. No, you can um, look it up with the. Uh... The first round, I will look it up. Yeah. The first round, it seemed like they were both establishing some sort of distance. They they mm-hmm. they were just playing that game. Um, no one was going in. No one was being aggressive to the first punch. Um, I felt Diego was a little bit more aggressive. Uh, that's why I gave it to him just by a nod. Yeah, and that's like that's like the kind of when I don't want to even give it, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, you said that both guys lost in that round, did, actually. I and, did say that. And I know what that's like. Yeah. When, when it's so close that nobody really claimed victory there. Nobody, yeah. nobody went out there in that first round, which the first round is so vital to me. Nobody went out there in that first round and, mm-hmm. and wanted to win or nobody won, won it. Decisively yeah. won it's funny because Sanchez is kind of known for his just, just balls out. Yeah. Balls out. Where was mm-hmm. that? Just, clench his yeah. his mouthpiece and just and just uh-huh. but, mm-hmm. I know he seemed a little reserved to me. He they're both reserved, I think. I think it could have been an equal amount of respect for each other when you go mm-hmm. against a fighter at a, at a high level like this that you really respect. There it's not intimidation. People think, "Oh, he's scared of him or he's scared of mm-hmm. him." It's more so they're they're taking that first round to learn the opponent and to take that yeah. time to, you know, have respect for the hard hits they could get hit with. You got to study, smart. yeah, the higher the higher ranking fighter or the tougher fighter that you mm-hmm. are facing, you got to study them more, and you got to study them closer. Yeah. And both of these guys uh, are, are that. Neither of them uh, were ranked in the top 15. However, right. Diego Sanchez was the very first uh, Ultimate Fighter winner mm-hmm. in Season 1 at 170 pounds. Ross Pearson won his season, which mm-hmm. uh, was season it? Number nine. Season 9. Season uh, 9 at 155 pounds. So mm-hmm. both of them have that... Uh, have that high level MMA pedigree. Absolutely. Yeah. So I yeah, I don't want to take away from that first round. To take away from them, I get what they may have been doing, but mm-hmm. I still would have liked to have seen a little bit more aggression or yeah. dominance on one side. I agree. Mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, <clears throat> Diego Sanchez won, Ross Pearson lost. I mean, there's nothing we can do to change that. I yeah. mean Diego For Sanchez. the record, I scored it for Pearson. I, I had Pearson <laughs> winning. I think um, everyone did. I thought he, I mean, he was he was slipping all of uh, Diego's punches, and mm-hmm. and they said he was counterattacking, but it was effective. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, Diego was kind of just just throwing. He yeah. was slipping and hitting him back harder than he took. Yeah. So Pearson was landing more in the third. Um, the, he cut open Diego. I, mm-hmm. I thought that it was pretty clear cut that uh, Pearson took the third, the second, and the third. Right. He knew the results, so I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm like, oh, Pearson won, awesome. Mm-hmm. And he goes, do you know, do you know the results yet? And I'm like, no. And he's like, oh, just wait. I'm like, wait. I, I should have videotaped it because your reaction was amazing. <laughs> what the hell? No, I can't replay it here. It's a little inappropriate. But <laughs> I, I was so, I was like, what? I was almost sure that my judging skills were on point and that. Well, that maybe they are, and of... maybe it's the the judges. Yeah, maybe maybe those in New Mexico. Yeah, maybe. You know, we had, we had, we had a few of these matches that you know were up in the air with that. But uh, bottom line, Dana White always says it, and end the mm-hmm. fight, and you won't have to worry about these hard exactly. decisions. You know, you don't have to worry don't about leave it in the hands of the judges. Home cage advantage, which is a phrase I coined today. <laughs> they say home cage. field. They say home court. Home octagon. Home gone. Home gone. Home <laughs> gone. This is my home gone. But you can't do that if it's uh, if it's somebody else's. If it's another fight promotion, you can't say home octagon, because the UFC has a trademark on the octagon. So really, yeah, oh. yeah, and and for that matter, frankly, that's so, why you don't see other uh, cages. Uh, so <laughs> George's way, buddy. It's not going to come in right away. 
George is sitting here trying to get that octagon money here. Let's go get Bruce and, Buffer. And uh, clamoring to the camera. It's, it doesn't get wired in that fast, bro. No, it doesn't. <laughs> There's one more fight. Let's go over the last fight. I think we have like what, two seconds left. Bruce Buffer can patent it for you. He did it for Ooh. his stepbrother. Ooh. Yeah. Interesting. He's very Home good at it. Home gone advantage. Let go for it, guys. Call. Benson Henderson versus all right, all right. Rustam Kabalov. The main event. Mm-hmm. Jay Tan. What did you think about it? Um, what did I think about it? It was uh, great. It was a fun, fun fight. Uh, Benson Henderson, uh, former UFC and WEC champion, ranked number two right now versus Rustem Kabalov, ranked number uh, sorry, ranked number eleven. Um, you know, talk mm -hmm. about home field advantage. Rustem uh, Kabalov trains with uh, Jackson Winklejohn in Albuquerque, mm -hmm. uh, but that did not make much of a difference this time because no. Ben Henderson uh, caught Kabalov in round three uh, with a nice, uh, it was a great scramble. Le sorry, was it four? Excuse me. Damn it, my notes. That's right. Here's chicken scratch. I was going to say. Live is internet, your, folks. Sorry. Is it, is it your notes or is it your handwriting? <laughs> it's, de <laughs> it's definitely the handwriting. Uh, yeah, I, I need a, a decoder ring and a magnifying glass for my notes here. But, um, yeah, round four, less than a minute and 30 into it. It was a great uh, back and forth match um, from first, second, and third rounds. Mm -hmm. uh, Kabalov, um, Kabalov gave... Uh, gave Henderson a run for his money, scrambling if it on the ground. If it would have gone downs. gone the distance and came to the decision, I I don't know what would have happened because we didn't. Uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, we had round five to, yeah. to discuss. What but... I love about Benton though is that mm -hmm. round four, you will never be able to tell it's round four because that guy is a cardio machine. He is. He is. He and he's so patient. And I almost, I mean, I think that his cardio is good, so good because he's so patient and calm. Because he's he able to control that heart himself down. throughout. Yeah. Whereas, you know, naturally any other fighter gets that little, you know, speed of adrenaline constantly throughout the fight. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? When he gets an advantage or when he gets disadvantage, your adrenaline naturally pumps. This guy, I literally think he has some sort of like meditation while he's fighting. He is so calm, so patient, and smart. He's mm -hmm. a smart fighter. Well, when you've been to the top like Henderson has, being yeah. champion in the WEC and also <clears throat> in the UFC. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, yeah, you you have your techniques down. There's there's a reason why he was champion. Yeah, because he was that damn good. Yeah. I I um, would have liked to have seen some more volume from Benson though. In, in the first couple rounds, it was too far and in between. You know what I mean? That's too never really far. been his style though. I mean, if you look at yeah. some of his past fights with Melendez and the second one with Edgar, it's like that's why it was so close because he was never that really that kind. I I agree with you. Right. But it's, I I don't really. You're think right. It's his it style, isn't his yeah. style. Mm -hmm. But I mean, still, when you're going against, I mean, I guess it wasn't that competitive. Yeah. But, but it was a very great uh, – uh, the, the finish in round four was uh, that Henderson landed an uppercut into the cage, uh, pushing Kabalov back, and right. Kabalov dropped, and Henderson swarmed on him and got a, a rear naked choke. Right. Uh, and that was pretty fast at, at that point. It, Kabalov didn't uh, – wasn't able to fight for too long. Once, no, it, once, once he had it, there. it was in. Because yeah. like I yeah. said, I, like you said, he had so much energy still. Mm -hmm. So it, was, it wasn't like a – normal fourth round rear naked choke like oh yeah. my god if i don't get this my arms are gonna be done it was like oh what yeah. if i don't get this you know I'll just yeah win again henderson looked good in the second and third um there was a lot of uh scrambling it was a lot of uh a lot of wrestling in general i was gonna say they, mm -hmm. they were on their feet quite a bit mm -hmm. um but then also there's some uh, great takedowns uh, kabalov got henderson down to the ground several times in in each round and uh but henderson was was able to come back and either escape pretty fast uh, or reverse it on on Kabalov. He was switching a couple of times. Yeah, we saw that bottom. amazing jujitsu. Yeah. In, oh in the last round, it was mm -hmm. on point. We yes. saw the hip switch that yep. we and you looked at each other. We were switches. like, "Oh my god, yep. that looked amazing." I haven't seen yeah. that since uh, states state wrestling tournament. His ground game really came out, and I think overall, that's uh, mm -hmm. you can't beat it. Yeah. You can't beat his uh, jujitsu. Yeah. You said he got his black belt a couple of years ago, right? Mm hmm Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I agree. I think he's not quite ready for another title shot since the guy who beat him already beat him twice, both right. in WEC and UFC. Mm -hmm. But right. speaking to what I said earlier, Rafael Dos Anjos, Benson Henderson, perfect matchup. Yeah. Both goes both those guys just coming off a win, especially with Melendez and Pettis both being busy for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Thompson, I think, already has a fight. Right. Uh, Khabib Numergoredov. Numergoredov, I think, just came off a fight. So makes sense. You know, Dos Anjos moving up, Henderson 
There's really no one else right. left. But it's a step up in competition. I for agree. Each so vote. I think yeah. it's a that, perfect make it a number one contendership. That's something that would faces. get the weight class moving because, right, like we said, it's tied up right now. You can't mm-hmm. do anything with the, with the two top guys. Even then, that match, man, you're talking about 2000, early 2015 at the earliest mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. before those guys fight, and that's notwithstanding if you know uh, if the if the champion of the the winner of Pettis and Melendez mm-hmm. uh, is injured. That's assuming he's uninjured. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I want to mention that. Well, I've noticed Benson's a hard guy to score. I think uh, his patience sometimes. I mean, I I haven't watched a lot of his fights go to decision. I haven't watched them recently, but um, I think his patience can almost come off as something else to the judges. We were talking about mm-hmm. a couple shows back how, you know, when guys look too calm, people think they're tired. Mm-hmm. That being said, though, I'm going to contradict myself and say that he didn't look tired. He looked calm. Well, there's a, yeah, there's a big difference. There is a difference between being tired and trying to catch your breath and catch a breather right. while a guy is you know chasing you down versus somebody that's just picking and choosing the shots. Right. Um, and that can be deceptive. Unfortunately, that's uh, judges are are human beings and their eyes, their opinion is you know unfortunately subjective a lot mm-hmm. of the time. Um, so what you know, one guy sees black, the other guy sees white. You know, in terms of what's the level, of the quality that the fighter is uh, is fighting at. Right. Um, and and you can make that argument for uh, for I'm sorry, uh, Sanchez and Pearson. You know, clearly the judges saw different matches mm-hmm. between a 30-27 and a 27-30. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and for maybe, that matter, maybe one person was seeing something like that, like I like I mentioned, and the yeah. other person wasn't. And and that speaks to the whole need of much more standardized judging criteria yeah, throughout like, the entire North American continent. You like know, Big at, le- at least America. About. Yeah, yeah. What uh, what Big John was saying last mm-hmm. week. Um, but you know, another good one, guys. You want here's your history lesson one hundred and one. Go back, uh, fight pass. On uh, on UFC.com, nine ninety nine a month, very well worth it. If you enjoy watching old fights, here's a great one to go watch. Uh, December, I believe, I want to say two thousand eleven or two thousand twelve, mm-hmm. the very first Benson Henderson versus Anthony Pettis oh match. Oh my god! Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. That the, fifth round, the full the whole card that it was on it was the very last WEC show before all of those fighters were massed into the UFC ranks. But uh, you can look up something called Showtime Kick on YouTube. That was from that match. Uh, I don't want to give a spoiler or anything, but Anthony Showtime Pettis proved why his the, nickname is Showtime. Showtime. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The, the kick the innovation thing. that that guy has is uh, is just amazing. So go check that one out. And that was a very close one that speaks to your uh, judging criteria yes. frustrations. Absolutely. We only yeah. have a couple minutes left here, but real quick, I want you guys to go through your fight of the night. Oh um, ah, crap. <laughs> That's a good uh, you just, all lose. just quickly. I mean, honestly, I thought the Dotson Moraga was is entertaining to me. I okay. mean, I I don't think I have time to say why, but yeah. I, that yeah. to me Jay was Tan? just uh, that was a fantastic one. I also liked Henderson and Kabalov. Uh, Sanchez and Pearson delivered. Um, you know, there there were some great finishes here, and you got mm. bang for your buck in terms of quantity and quality on this show. Okay. So pick them. I, I say Diego Sanchez, Ross Pearson. Yeah, Diago. guys. Te- Diago. It's Diago now. <laughs> Guys, check us out on Twitter. Check us out on Facebook, AfterBuzz TV. Give us a like. Give us a comment. Give us a tweet. Mm-hmm. Um, iTunes. We will be back. iTunes as well. We will be back uh, next Sunday yep. doing the UFC. What is it? 174. 174. Mm-hmm. 174. Uh, we have um, Demetrius, Demetrius Johnson, Johnson defending and against Ali flyweight Bagatinov. Ali Bagatinov. Bagatinov. Yep. All right. Uh, J Tan. Well, Bagatinov is ranked, I believe, number four. No, I mean, uh, right do you want to give your Twitter? Give your oh, Facebook? <laughs> I don't think we have time for Say goodbye. Say so goodbye. So much for that one. Um, yeah, Oops. you can find me online at JTan716, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, and that's it for me. Me, <laughs> uh, George. My name is George. Uh, G Hermosa on Twitter or Instagram. MySpace, Live Journal. Okay, DarryRay.com, at DarryB28 on Twitter, and follow me here next Sunday. You can, oh. find, me, you can find me on Tinder, too. I don't know what that is, but everybody else has it. <laughs> it is a dating thing, I think. Oh, then you definitely can find me on Tinder. <laughs> Mom, uh, don't bother with uh, dinner tonight. I've got a date. I'll be back later tonight. Woo! With George Armosa. That's right. I didn't say All that. right, guys, we will see you <laughs> next Sunday live. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. 
to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.